Many books have been written about ancient Egypt. When we think of Egypt, our thoughts turn to the pyramids. The oldest standing pyramid in the world is said to be this pyramid at Sagara in Egypt. It is a step pyramid with many layers. It is also called a ziggurat. Today if you visit Egypt, this is what you will see. We can only speculate on the rituals which were observed with this pyramid at Sagara. We also find the ruins of a temple complex that was associated with pyramidal worship. To the north of this pyramid at Sagara, we can find the great pyramids at Giza. The pyramids of ancient Egypt have inspired mystery and awe throughout time. How were they built? What was the purpose of these structures? The Sphinx is on the eastern side of the Great Pyramid at Giza. As we observe the Sphinx, we find the head of a man and the body of a lion. Why was this composite beast made? Could it be possible that the Bible can give us the answer to these mysteries, the mystery of the pyramid? Let us explore this subject and tie the Bible in with these ancient cultures. The lone survivors of the seven wonders of the ancient world are the three pyramids of Giza. Awesome in their vastness, marvelous in their architectural form, mysterious in the origin and purpose, these massive structures still dominate the landscape as monuments of the past. Camels and their owners are ever-present and anxious to take tourists for rides around the pyramids. People from many countries of the world visit these gigantic monuments of stone every year. One might ask the question, why are people so fascinated with the pyramids? Much of the beauty of these pyramids in their original form have been stripped away. Some estimate there could be 2,300,000 to 3 million stone blocks in the Great Pyramid at Giza, weighing from 2 tons to 72 tons. At one time they were covered with alabaster, a translucent stone that must have been gorgeous. And at the top of the pyramids, legends tell us there was a crystal with a gold capstone. As we look at our dollar bill, we find a replica of the Great Pyramid at Giza with the all-seeing eye at the top. What does this represent? Does it have an occult meaning? As we see the words Anuit Coeptus, we find that they mean our enterprise. Novus Ordo Seclorum means the New World Order. Is there a mystic teaching behind the symbol that we find on our dollar bill? That is a good question. It ties in with the New World Order that we are hearing so much about today. On the back of every dollar bill, starting with the 1928 silver certificate, is the symbol of Adam Weishaupt's dream and the gold of the insiders, the eye over the pyramid, with the year 1776 inscribed into the base of the pyramid in Roman numerals. Bannered beneath the pyramid are the words Novus Ordo Seclorum, meaning New World Order. A book was recently published entitled The Keys of This Blood by Malachi Martin, a Roman Catholic priest, and on its cover we read these words, Pope John Paul II versus Russia and the West for control of the New World Order. Recently a leading magazine had this caption, Is there a New World Order? How does the United Nations tie in with this New World Order? Is it possible that a power from beneath is guiding in the affairs of the United Nations? Within that building they have what is called the Meditation Room. It was built like an Egyptian tomb. 
Within this room we can see an abstract mural. When it is turned on its side to the left we can see a pyramid. We also see a circle with light and darkness represented within its area. As we study these symbols in the occult world, it revolves around the powers of good and evil. This is the cover of a rock music album featuring the pyramid with the all-seeing eye and the Sphinx. The Bible tells us that at one time Lucifer was the highest of all the angels, the covering cherub. He was beautiful, and because of his position and his beauty he became proud, and then we are told he wanted to be worshipped as God. He rebelled in heaven and deceived a third of the angels. And in Revelation 12 it says, There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. There must have been much mourning with the loyal angels in heaven when the evil angels were cast out of heaven. The Bible goes on to tell us of the history of this world. We are told that there was a period of time before the flood when men's thoughts were evil continually, and God said if they did not repent, the world would be destroyed with a flood. Mankind did not repent. And there was a great flood that came to this world. The flood was so great that it destroyed every living thing upon this earth except Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. Eight people in all. And no matter where you go in this world, you will find evidence of a great flood and water covering the highest mountains of this earth. After the waters receded, the ark came to rest on Mount Ararat. Eight people survived that flood when the world was destroyed with water. Noah begat Ham, we are told, and Ham begat Cush, and Cush begat Nimrod. And Nimrod is mentioned as being a mighty hunter in the Bible. You can read about Nimrod and Babylon in Genesis 10 and 11. Nimrod was said to have been a giant. He was so powerful he could overcome animals with his bare hands. Homeric poems, sagas, epics, and legends tell the story of a great physical force that lived on this earth shortly after the flood. Undoubtedly, this is the story of Nimrod. Nimrod wanted to build a great city after the flood. And so he got his followers together, and they built this city which was called Babylon. Babylon and its teachings were an abomination to God, and we read much about Babylon in the Old and the New Testament as well. In Genesis 11 we read these words, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth." This is an old-time movie that tries to picture what it was like shortly after the flood, when Babylon was built. In this movie they picture the Tower of Babel, but they show the Tower of Babel as a turreted tower, and the Tower of Babel was not a turreted tower. It was a ziggurat, or a step pyramid. And this step pyramid has a significance in the way it was built. It had seven layers. Each one of those layers corresponded to one of the planetary gods. And at the top was to be a temple where the god would commune with mankind. 
God saw the wickedness of man as they built this tower, and we are told that God destroyed the top of that tower, He confused their language, and the people spread throughout the entire earth, taking their apostate teachings with them. And this is one reason we have pyramids and pyramidal worship all over this world of ours. And this will be the subject that we will study, pyramidal worship. Let us go back to Egypt, where we find the great pyramids at Giza in northern Egypt, and a little way below the great pyramids we find the pyramid at Sagara, the step pyramid that we mentioned at the beginning of our study. The great pyramids were Khufu, Khafre, and Menkuri, and we have the Sphinx in this area as well. The step pyramid at Sagara is reminiscent of the Tower of Babel. This pyramid is made of sun-dried brick. The Tower of Babel was made of sun-dried brick. We do not know the exact time when these pyramids were built, but I believe all the pyramids in the world were built after the flood. And this great pyramid at Sagara must have been built shortly after the Tower of Babel was built. The temple area was beautiful, but now we just see the ruins of these monuments of folly that were used to worship the devil. As we come north from Sagara, we find an interesting area that is beneath the sands of Egypt. This Egyptian gentleman was there when I took these pictures with his donkey trying to make a little money to survive in this desolate area of Egypt. Here we see what is called a serapium. It is a tomb under the sands of Egypt, and as one enters this tomb we find a great hall, and the ceiling of this hall is very high, 16, 18, 20 feet tall, and there are many crypts in this tomb. At one time there were huge caskets containing the remains of sacred bulls. They called them apis, and bull worship was part of pyramidal worship in the ancient Egyptian culture. This is an illustration from an old book on Egypt picturing the caskets for the sacred bulls. In Exodus 32 we read the story of a golden calf. The Egyptians that came out of Egypt with the Israelites danced around this golden calf and worshipped the golden calf. This was bull worship that they learned back in ancient Egypt. This was an abomination to God. And so we find the study of bull worship all over the world, and in Egypt it was associated with pyramidal worship. As we look north from the Serapium where they buried the sacred bulls, we see the great pyramids of Giza. It is hard to imagine how massive these structures are unless you actually see the pyramids in northern Egypt, 486 feet tall is the pyramid of Khufu. The Greeks called it Cheops. We see these massive stones and people are still wondering how the pyramids were built. But as one studies the Bible, we find shortly after the flood that mankind lived several hundred years. Their intellect was great, and these were tremendous structures. Now one of the answers to the mystery of the pyramid can be found in this structure on the side of one of the pyramids. They discovered a ship. It was part of a ship burial that was associated with the pyramids. The ancient Egyptian believed when the Pharaoh died he would go from this life to the next in a ship. This indicates that the pyramids in part were a tomb. This is how that ship looked when it was reconstructed. They say it is one of the oldest ships in the world today. Ship burials can be found all over this world of ours. 
And as you go into the tombs of Egypt, many times you will find models of ships. No one was to look at these ships after the tomb was sealed. It was part of their mystic teachings on the immortality of the soul, and they believed the model of the ship would represent an actual ship that would take the Pharaoh from this life to the next. As we study a diagram of the pyramid, we could see an ascending and a descending passage within that structure. If you could go into the pyramid today and go into the ascending passage, you would see huge stones perfectly fit together. It would be a challenge for any engineer to duplicate this structure today. The ascending passage leads to the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. The descending passage has an opening that points to the north star, the pole star. The descending passage is over 300 feet long and ends in a reflecting pool. This was a type of a reflecting telescope, and as one could look through that ascending passage, you would find a corbelled arch. It was like a stairway upside down. It was a measuring device to track the movements of the planets, but the primary focus was on the pole star, the north star. Now it's interesting, as you study the Bible, you will find that Satan considered himself to be the king of the north. We read about this in the book of Isaiah, in the twelfth verse and on. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? There had to be a mastermind that was behind the building of the great pyramids and the Sphinx. We notice that the Sphinx has the head of a man, the body of a lion, and bull worship was part of pyramidal worship. In the ancient Mesopotamian culture, great winged bulls were placed on either side of the ruling monarchs. We find the head of a man, the wings of an eagle, the body of a bull, and the breast of a lion. Four characteristics that we find in bull worship all over the world. In astrology, we find four fixed signs of the zodiac. Leo the lion, Taurus the bull, Aquarius the water carrier or man, and Scorpio, which was the serpent, and the eagle. Now, as we study the book of Revelation, especially Revelation 4 and 5, we read of the throne of God. We read of the covering cherubs on either side of the throne. Lucifer was one of these covering cherubs at one time. We read of what is described as four beasts around the throne. They have the characteristics of a man, an eagle, a bull, and a lion. These symbolized a special order of angels called the seraphim, and they took on the characteristics of Christ revealed in the bull, the lion, the eagle, and the man. Now in Egypt, the Nile was called the sacred river. It was called the river of life. And if we could see what the pyramids actually looked like when they were first built, we would find streets that went to the River Nile, the River of Life. Now notice that the pyramids had the Sphinx on the eastern side, pointing toward the rising of the sun. As we study the throne of God, we find that the throne is high and lifted up above the holy city, which is considered to be four square and the river of life flows from the throne of God. As we study the book of Revelation, we read these words, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, 
proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. Notice that the holy city was four square. As we go back into history, during the time of Nebuchadnezzar, about 600 years before the time of Christ, we find that Nebuchadnezzar had the Tower of Babel rebuilt. The Tower of Babel was destroyed during the time of Nimrod. A Babylonian priest named Berossus, who had seen the Tower of Babel, described it in ancient writings. We are told it was a step pyramid, a ziggurat, and if you go to Berlin today, in the Pergamum Museum, you will see this model of the Tower of Babel. Prophecy foretold the destruction of Babylon and the Tower of Babel as well. The Tower of Babel was completely destroyed, and these are the remains of the Tower of Babel today. As we study pyramids, we find the word pyramid means fire in the midst. Pyr or pyre is fire amid, in the midst, fire in the midst, pyramid. They were called holy mountains, and they were worshipped all over this world of ours. As we study the throne of God in the Bible, we find that it is described as a holy mountain. In Ezekiel 28 we read these words, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. In different parts of the world today, people walk up and down on literal stones of fire. It is supernatural and it revolves around Satan worship. There are many pyramids in Central America and one of the most fascinating is found in a place called Chichen Itza in the upper portion of the Yucatan. As one travels to Chichen Itza, we find a vast ruin with a great pyramid called the Castillo Ziggurat. It is a step pyramid. It has four stairways with 91 steps and one big step at the top, making 365 steps one of the sacred numbers for sun worship. The temple is at the top where the gods were to commune with mankind. A number of years ago an artist visited Chichen Itza and this is how it appeared at that time. There are pyramids throughout Central America. Some say up to a hundred thousand pyramids can be found in that part of the world. If one would look closely at the banisters on either side of the stairways, you would find that they are bodies of serpents. And at the base of that stairway, we find the heads of the serpents. A serpent body on either side of the stairway and ending with the heads of serpents at the base. You will find this throughout Central America. At a certain time each year, when the sun shines on the banisters, it appears as if the serpent is moving on that Castillo ziggurat. Sun, serpent, and Satan worship revolve around pyramidal worship as well. In central Egypt, there is a temple dedicated to Hatshepsut. Some say she could have been the stepmother of Moses. There is a stairway leading up to the temple complex that has two banisters. And as we look at the ruins of those banisters, this is what we see. The head of a serpent at the base and the body of a serpent going up to the temple area. 
two serpents, one on either side of the stairway. Now, it could have been a winged serpent at that base. A National Geographic artist reconstructed Hatshepsut's mortuary temple in this painting, and he pictures the body undulating going up on those stairways. And he has Horus the hawk god over the head of the serpent at the base. The point that is of interest to us is that the banisters are the bodies of serpents, ending in the heads of serpents at the beginning of the stairway. We find the same structure in the Orient. Stairways with serpent banisters. This cannot be a coincidence. There is a mastermind behind this temple system all over this world of ours. As we travel to Central America once again, we come to a place called Palenque. Palenque is next to the Guatemalan border. It is one of the wettest spots in Mexico. Here we find the pyramid of the inscriptions. For years they thought that these pyramids were temples exclusively. But a Mexican archaeologist discovered holes at the top of this temple a number of years ago. He had some men help him to lift a great slab, and they found a passageway going down in that pyramid. It was full of rubble. They cleared out the rubble, and when they came to the base of that passageway, they discovered skeletons. And they found that they had human sacrifices with the burials for the priest kings. For years, archaeologists in Central America believed that these pyramids were temples and not tombs. But these recent discoveries proved that they were not only temples, but tombs many times for the priest king. The immortality of the soul has been one of the great deceptions of the devil. We find this teaching associated with pyramidal worship, not only in Central America, but in Egypt as well. They discovered a great stone slab on this casket with strange carvings. Here we see a figure sitting on a stylized jaguar. Some have claimed this is an astronaut taking off to outer space with his hands and his feet on levers. But this is not so. This is Paul Cal, the priest king that was placed within that casket. The carvings on this lid reveal the teachings of these ancient people. They worship the sun god in the form of a jaguar. That is why we find this stylized jaguar on this carving of the lid of this casket. They believed when the sun set in the evening it took the form of a jaguar. They also believed you went from this life to the next by way of a sacred tree. They called it the Seba tree or the immortality tree. In the archaeological museum in Mexico City, one can see this model of a pyramid. It seems that there is a pyramid within a pyramid. This is the step pyramid, a ziggurat, and it's reminiscent of the first pyramid after the flood, the Tower of Babel. This is a replica of the pyramid at Chichen Itza, the Castillo Ziggurat. Within the Castillo Ziggurat, they found a chamber with a stylized jaguar. It was painted red, representing the color of the sun, and they worshipped the jaguar, as was mentioned, as the sun god at night. Sun, moon, and star worship can be traced back to ancient Babylon, where the first pyramid was built after the flood. This teaching has been an abomination to God, people worshiping the created rather than the creator. This is Tikal in Guatemala. Here we see the Temple of the Jaguar. This is a great pyramid in the heart of the Guatemalan jungle. There must have been a tremendous civilization in Central America at one time with these great pyramids. 
This is the pyramid of the Jaguar at Tikal. It is very steep. It was said that they had human sacrifices associated with this pyramidal worship. A number of years ago when I made a visit to Tikal, I could hear the Jaguar in the ruins of this complex. One of the reasons people worship the Jaguar as the sun god because the markings on its body resembled a sun disk. Outside of Mexico City, there is a ruin with many pyramids. It is called Teotihuacan, and the great Pyramid of the Sun dominates the landscape in this ruin. It is 700 feet square at the base and as tall as a 20-story building, a massive structure. Here we see the Street of the Dead and the Pyramid of the Moon. Again, sun, moon, and star worship was part of this culture in Central America. They found dragons on a temple there dedicated to the winged serpent god Quetzalcoatl. Dragons and serpents in their worship. It was said when the priest officiated in the pyramidal service, he went up the stairs in a movement like a serpent. He would go to the top of the pyramid where the temple was, and it was there they were to commune with the serpent god. In the Bible we read the serpent was a symbol of the devil. Throughout Central America we find many step pyramids, much like the Tower of Babel that we read about in the Bible. As we go to the Orient we find pagodas. In a sense they are like the stairway to heaven, a step pyramid, a ziggurat. This is a temple in Bangkok in Thailand. Notice the way the roofs are multi-layered and they have dragons on the eaves of these temples. As we travel to Scandinavia we find dragon churches there that were built by so-called converted Vikings. There are dragon heads on the eaves and the shingles are made like the scales of a dragon. Notice this is built much like the pagodas in the Orient. Many layers, like a stairway to heaven. Notice again the temple in Bangkok and compare it with those dragon churches in Scandinavia. Again, this cannot be just a coincidence. The mastermind behind these temples and pyramidal worship is that old serpent called the devil and Satan. This is the design for the European economic community. Eleven stars, pentagrams, upside down above what they thought was the Tower of Babel. But as we look at the Tower of Babel here, it was not the same type of Tower of Babel that we find in Babylon. A Flemish artist named Peter Bruegel went down to Rome and he saw the Colosseum. And he thought the Colosseum would be a good model for the Tower of Babel. So he painted this painting of the Tower of Babel to look like the Colosseum. Now this is ironic because in the Colosseum the Christians were persecuted in the early Christian era. These devoted commandment-keeping Christians were thrown in that arena to be torn apart by wild animals for the Word of God and for the testimony that they bore. Let us look at the pentagram here on this emblem. It is upside down. Anyone that has studied a five-pointed star upside down in the occult world knows that it represents the powers of evil. It is a symbol of the devil. Here we find Anton LaVey, the head of the Church of Satan, and he wears a pentagram upside down. To the left you see the Mendesian goat or the goat of Satan in that pentagram challenging the powers of heaven with its horns. 
This represents the powers of evil. One wonders why they have pentagrams upside down on this emblem. Europe, many tongues, one voice, the Tower of Babel. And it seems that Europe has been in confusion for hundreds of years. In the second chapter of Daniel, we read about a great image with a head of gold, a breast of silver, waist of brass, legs of iron, feet of iron and clay. This represents the different kingdoms of the European continent. As we come down to the feet, we find that the feet are part of potter's clay and part of iron. And then there's a stone that is cut out without hands, smites the image, breaks it to pieces and grinds it to powder. Those feet that are part clay and part iron represent the divided state of the European continent. Many have tried to make Europe under one leader, such as Adolf Hitler. The Bible says they will not cleave one to another. And we see the devastation and suffering that has come through men like Adolf Hitler. Will the European economic community succeed in uniting Europe? Bible prophecy tells us they will not be one. Adolf Hitler had the swastika as his symbol. It is an ancient symbol coming from sun worship. Yugoslavia has been in the news in recent times. We find three forces in Yugoslavia, Roman Catholicism of Croatia, the Orthodox Church, and the Muslim group in Serbia. They do not want to cleave one to another. This is a religious war, and it leaves Europe in a dilemma. They are looking for a leader, a man of peace, and many are saying the Pope of Rome is the person that will unite Europe and bring peace once again. But as we study history, we find that Roman Catholicism has been one of the greatest persecuting powers in history. During the Dark Ages, millions of people were put to death because they did not conform to the Roman Catholic dogma. The keys of this blood, Pope John Paul II versus Russia and the West for control of the New World Order. Bible prophecy tells us that the Pope of Rome will have an important part in the end time movement. Again, let us look at the symbol on the dollar bill, the great pyramid with the all-seeing eye. Novus Ordo Seclorum, the New World Order. The Bible tells us that in the end, Satan will personate Christ and come to different parts of the world as an angel of light. Today, the Middle East is a land in turmoil. The devout Jews are looking for the return of the Messiah to deliver them from their enemies and make them a great nation once again. But there will never be lasting peace in the Middle East. The hatred between the Jew and the Arab is too deep. The Arab nation is looking for the return of the Mahdi, and the Bible foretells war will rage in the last scenes of this earth's history. We find that many nations today are angry and there are calamities and atrocities in Jerusalem as well as in the Arab world and other parts of the world as well. The world is preparing to receive the man of peace. Many are talking about the battle of Armageddon and the evangelical world is looking for the return of the Messiah to come through the eastern gate and set up a time of peace for a thousand years on this earth. But this is a misconception of Armageddon. This is the eastern gate in Jerusalem. It is through this gate that the evangelical world and the Jewish nation is looking for the return of the Messiah. The evangelical world believes that this will be the second coming of Christ 
to set up a thousand years of peace on this earth. It is very possible that Lucifer, as an angel of light, personating Jesus Christ, will come through that gate, possibly as the Mahdi for the Arab world. Let's read these words in the 16th chapter of Revelation. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. These are the three major ruling powers in the world. The dragon paganism, the beast Roman Catholicism, the false prophet apostate Protestantism. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. If you get a good Bible dictionary and look up the translation of Armageddon, you will find the word is Harmoed and means Mount of the Congregation. As we analyze the words Mount of the Congregation, it takes us into the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. This is what it says. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Armageddon, Harmoed, mount of the congregation. That is where Satan wants to sit. He wants to be worshipped as God. The battle of Armageddon is in part the battle between good and evil. On one side will be Satan and his forces. They will have the mark of the beast in the end that revolves around the mystic number 666. God's army will be under the blood-stained banner of Prince Emmanuel. They will have the seal of God in the forehead, and they will keep God's Ten Commandment law including the fourth commandment, the Sabbath commandment. We are told in Revelation 19, when Jesus comes, he is pictured symbolically riding on a white horse. He comes as King of kings and Lord of lords with many crowns. Out of his mouth is a sharp two-edged sword representing the Word of God. And he has blood-stained garments. This will be the battle of the Lord God Almighty the battle of Armageddon. He comes with the armies of heaven, conquering and to conquer. This will be a most solemn time. We want to be sure that we understand the meaning of the second coming of Christ and the signs of the end. When Jesus comes as King of kings and Lord of lords, there will be hail that will be about the weight of a talent that will fall upon the wicked. The righteous will look up into the heavens, and they will see Jesus come, and they will say, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for Him, and He will save us. The righteous will go to heaven with Jesus, and there they will reign as kings and priests with our Lord for a thousand years. We are told in the 20th chapter of Revelation that at the end of the thousand years, the wicked will be raised, and Satan and his evil angels will be loosed. And they think that they can overcome the holy city under the leadership of Satan. We are told that they marshal their forces together. Great generals that have died throughout history will be there to lead this force against the throne of God and the holy city. It will take a period of time. We can only imagine what it will be like when the forces of evil encompass the camp of the saints, and they will try to overcome 
the forces of Jesus Christ, but they will be defeated. We are told that fire will come down from heaven, and Satan and the evil angels and all the wicked will be burned up at the end of the thousand years. In Ezekiel we are told that Satan will be the last to be destroyed. Let us read these words in Ezekiel 28. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, the throne. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Notice that the devil wanted to sit upon the holy mountain of God. What will it be like, dear friend, at that time? to lose eternal life for the tinsel of this world. We are told that the wicked and Satan and the evil angels will be destroyed in a great lake of fire, while God's people will be on a sea of glass in the holy city, the glorious holy mountain where God will reign throughout the endless ages of eternity. It is a most solemn thought when we think how awful it will be to lose eternal life. We do not know what the holy city looks like. We know that there will be a new heaven and a new earth when this world of ours is destroyed by fire and God will recreate it into a beautiful planet. And here He will have His throne high and lifted up. Is it possible that God's throne will be in the form of a pyramid? We will have to wait and see. But let us be sure that we are on God's side at that time. It's going to be wonderful when there will be a new earth. No more sin or sinners. Only the righteous will reign throughout eternity. It will be perfect harmony throughout the entire universe we will be able to commune with all the redeemed and the holy angels and the Godhead as well. What a wonderful time is awaiting for God's people. Friends, let's be sure that we are there, that we will have eternal life. You know, the Bible says, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. We will see God's holy city, its four square, and we will see the throne of God high and lifted up. What a cheap counterfeit Satan has made with pyramids on this earth in comparison to God's glorious holy mountain. Someday we will see and we will know what it will look like. Let us be faithful. Amen.